On behalf of the Raging Cajuns team, I'd like to welcome you to our skills video. The topic for this video is sensor optimization. Here is a depiction of our complete system for the 2021 RoboBoat competition. In this picture, you can see the Raging Cajuns team on site testing our system at one of our many test runs throughout this year. So my name is Joseph Stevens. I am a recent graduate with a degree in mechanical engineering. Throughout my time serving on this project, I was a senior and had the privilege of serving as team captain. Uh, while doing so, I was closely involved with the development, design, and analysis of the system. Hello, my name is Brennan Muller, and I am also a recent mechanical engineering graduate. And I was in charge of the communications and software implementation for our system. For this year's competition, we decided to integrate an unmanned aerial vehicle into our system. This UAV will serve as a mobile sensor for the collection of image, distance, and localization data to be used for object detection, obstacle avoidance, and mapping. Here's a CAD model of our final design. Most of our components are placed in specific locations to control the location of our center of gravity. We wanted this below the horizontal plane in which the rotors lie and as close to the center as possible in order to achieve a more stable forward flight. However, the OBD machine vision sensor needed to be placed in the front for image data collection. The RTK GPS sensor was placed on top to assist with localization and mapping. When considering the placement of this camera, it was determined that mounting the camera in front of the UAV at a 20 degree angle from the vertical was the most effective way of using the camera's field of view for object recognition and obstacle avoidance. The portion of the field of view above the horizontal plane gives the UAV the ability to detect obstacles in its path, and the field of view below the horizontal plane gives the UAV the ability to recognize objects throughout the course. The team determined that a real-time kinematic global positioning system would be necessary to assist the UAV in localization. Due to traditional global positioning systems having a radial error of up to 16 feet, greater accuracy would be needed for the UAV to locate certain tasks throughout the course when using GPS coordinates provided by RoboNation. A real-time kinematic system accomplishes this by offering up to centimeter level accuracy. Our system is designed with an RTK GPS base station connected to our onshore computer and two other stations set up on our UAV and ASV. The accuracy of a real-time kinematic system increases with the number of stations. This was determined to be the best use of our system due to the number of components present in the system. This is our complete ASV system equipped with Oak D stereo cameras for machine vision feedback and planar lidars for depth perception on both bow and stern. These sensors were mounted on T-slotted aluminum framing for ease of access and replacing if failure should occur. Of course, we have the landing pad for the UAV mobile sensor, which is also the lid for our electronics enclosure on the ASV. To show the sensing capabilities of the sensors, here's a diagram of the field of view for the ASV system. The RGB camera on the Oak D machine vision sensor has a horizontal field of view of 68 degrees and a horizontal depth field of view of 72 degrees. However, by the addition of the planar LiDAR, which has a horizontal depth field of view of 230 degrees, this allows for a 64.8% increase in depth perception versus just having stereoscopic cameras. This sensor configuration also allows for the UAV to take full advantage of the holonomic motion or pure surge, sway, and yaw movement given by the ASV's thrusters configuration. This is the Raging Cages networking diagram for the competition. Depicted are all the computers connected to this network. There are two Jetson TX2s and one Raspberry Pi 4 on the ASV. All computers on the ASV are wired connections to save bandwidth for the newly integrated UAV. This is important because as stated earlier, this UAV is a mobile sensor for the ASV and will be sending collected data back to it. There is one Raspberry Pi 4 on the UAV, and the UAV connects to this network via the access point on the ASV. All of the computers are running the robot operating system, or ROS. ROS is the core of our system. It is used for everything from low-level control of the thrusters to calculating coordinate transformations during the competition for mapping and localization. Here is a high-level overview of our ROS network. This diagram shows how the system is configured. One of the TX2s on the ASV is our ROS master, and all of the other computers are running different ROS software packages for navigation, mapping, and control of these systems. Specifically in our system, ROS is used to collect, publish, and fuse the data needed for simultaneous localization and mapping purposes. 
Our competition strategy is where our system shines. The whole system will first navigate through the mandatory navigation channel with the main sensors on the ASV. The image data that is collected is sent to the You Only Look Once, or more specifically, YOLO V3 convolutional neural network for object detection in real time. The output of the image classifier is passed to the ASV's state machine to determine its behavior. Once the system passes through the obstacle channel, the UAV will launch so that it can survey each task before the ASV attempts any further task. The UAV will use the same YOLO V3 convolutional neural network to determine what buoys are in the frame as it tracks the buoys in the navigation channel, all while dropping waypoints with increased accuracy due to its RTK GPS system. Once the UAV exits the navigation channel, it will move along to the obstacle field via the RoboNation provided GPS coordinates and start surveying. The ASV will then navigate through the obstacle channel with the waypoints and map provided by the UAV. Similarly, each task will be completed until the system finishes. Being that the focus was on UAV integration and sensor optimization this year, the object delivery and acoustic docking task will not be attempted. Here's some testing from a local pond showcasing the ASV's maneuverability. Testing and simulation of the UAV can be seen here, with inside rotors simulator within Gazebo. As you can see, there is some instability in this system, being that the UAV's flight controller was not properly tuned. This video shows our UAV properly tuned in the Rotors Gazebo Simulator. This simulation will allow for all the peripherals code to be tested before application on the UAV. It will also provide a safer platform to test the UAV during further development. During our initial stages of testing our mobile sensor, we encountered a lot of erratic behavior while tuning our PID controller. In the early stages of tuning, the UAV exhibited flipping. In the later stages, oscillations in the Z direction were observed. These oscillations can be seen here in this clip. During tuning, the team had initial difficulties with obtaining the needed altitude for desired flight. As seen in this clip, the latest tuning session showed promise. During the design of our mobile sensor, important considerations were made for future development, one of which was to create a modular system that could be easily manipulated and improved upon by future teams for later competitions. As seen here, the team chose to use a DJI F450 frame. This frame can be broken down to incorporate extra plates for storage and can also be easily converted to a hexacopter by simply purchasing additional arms and two new plates. There are many available CAD models online that could also be used if future teams wanted to manufacture their own plates, as we did. Other considerations were made this year for future development of the ASV. The enclosure, which was secured by the 2020 Raging Cajuns team, was mounted to the ASV this year. A new mounting plate and DIN rail system was designed and manufactured to be installed in the enclosure. The new mounting plate and rail system will allow future teams the ability to easily upgrade and store new electronics and sensors to improve upon the current system.
Last but not least, the team wanted to ensure that future teams had a larger data set when training object recognition models. Last year's ASV contained two stereo cameras for image data collection. This year, an additional stereo camera was added to the system through the UAV. This will provide a platform capable of collecting even more image data, providing a larger data set for training. In addition to this, the team developed a model in a photorealistic CAD modeling software called Blender. Blender has a built-in Python interface and can be used to render photorealistic images and produce a file containing the location of the labeled bounding boxes for these images. This was done to save future teams multiple hours of hand labeling data. While ending this video, we'd like to take this time to thank our sponsors. Without their help and generosity, this project would not have been possible.